with the amount of unknowns related to the budget per se right now, right? We are literally at a point where uh, we hear you. We are 1,000% behind all of our support staff, all of our teachers, all of our social workers, all of our admins. Um, and I think that each year that we come to the table um, asking for money, uh, people seem to think that it's, you know, it's a want-based uh, situation. It's not, I don't think in three years on this board I've ever seen anything that wasn't a needs-based budget. So <clears throat> um, I speak pretty regularly to my supervisor counterpart, um, and we have a pretty decent working relationship together. Um, we actually agree on very many things. I think there's a lot of um, asks that um, I've given to him that I've asked him to kind of, and he will will support them, but that is a group effort and they need to work together to find ways to pull the money um, together. We have made the effort to redline as much as we possibly can, which is $62 million worth of redlining. Um, I think that shows a substantial effort on our part to try and not um, overwhelm the system, but our system is overwhelmed. Our school system is overwhelmed. It's It's, not just financial, it's emotional, it's mental, um, and it is staggering that this board and the community has to go and beg for their tax dollars to be reinvested back into their community and their schools and their people. So I don't have much more to say on, on the, the direction. I think we've all kind of absorbed a ton of information tonight and that will propel us forward, but I, I would be remiss if this board didn't, or I didn't, I can't speak for everybody clearly, um, just if I could stand up here and give out hugs and make money for hugging our support staff to thank you for hanging in there with us. Not that you'd want it, but that's what I do um, because I don't think that you realize just how much we do know what this is like for you and how much we do appreciate what you do for the school system. Um, I think that is, um, that is a clear message that if we leave with the budget hearing tonight with nothing else, that is what I would like to get across because it's very heartbreaking to see that we have so many people putting everything they have out there um, and we're begging for across the street to listen to us and to you um, and we are trying to work together i don't think because we have a fight i think fighting brings growth no matter what you do because you got to break past the barriers um but i just wanted to say i think this is a well thought out process kudos to dr taylor and his team thank you so much for I mean, I've never seen a bunch of lines, T's crossed and I's dotted like I've seen in the last three years of budget. So um, that's really all I have to say. Dr. Warner? I've been saying that the service sector scale has to be fixed for four years that I've been on the board and I'm still fighting for the same thing. It's just we are constantly choosing between bad decisions and worse decisions because we just don't have the funds. I think it is really important that we get at least phase one in for our non-license scale. I'm just hoping that we can do that. Um, but we don't have the numbers yet. Um, we have tried to create a very conservative budget and I appreciate the work that Dr. Taylor and his staff have put into that so that we are, but no, it's not enough. If I could add things to it, it would be phase one and two of the service sector scale, so they're caught up to the teachers. Phase three for the teachers, it would be paying our staff twice a month. It would be investing in the schools and the site-based learning, the site-based funds that we, we distribute. There are so many things that we need, and we are just constantly crossing them off the list and kicking them down the road and I just, it's, it's extremely frustrating to sit in this chair and to know what this community should be doing and to understand the balance between what we can do and what we're able to do. 